Oh. Thank God. Science is back, baby. And the earth is round, not flat. Washing your hands does work. Social distancing does matter. And wearing a face covering does help protect all of us. I do love science. There's a reason most people don't want to see, don't want to look. Don't want to peel back the layers of deception and dig beneath the surface. The simple fact is that they want to believe in the charade. They want to keep dreaming. So the dream lives on. But for those of us who have woken up, either suddenly or gradually over time, and been thrust into a confrontation with the dark reality that most people don't want to face, there is the unavoidable question of what it is that we are supposed to do about it. How do we respond? Do we seek to obtain the knowledge and power closely guarded by those who have already wreaked so much havoc upon the world? Do we seek another revolution? Another chance at trying to reform? Do we fight? Do we flee? Do we perhaps just slowly go mad as we watch the Orwellian nightmare gradually unfold, while most folks continue dreaming the days away? falling further and further into a technologically driven hypnotic state. Or do we find hope in the return of the Redeemer, the Risen King? There are many who scoff at the idea of waiting upon the return of the Savior, the return of Jesus. They would insist that this is futile thinking, or even cowardice. They would say that instead we have to free ourselves, be our own salvation. There are of course plenty more who scoff at the mere mention of questioning things like the earth, the cosmos, and the proud scientific achievements of humanity. And so we are encircled by a formidable host of scoffers indeed if we find ourselves standing in a place of holding both such positions. We find ourselves facing derision from the likes of our fellow Christians and creationists, who are thoroughly embarrassed by this resurgence of ancient biblical cosmology. We face opposition from the atheistic evolutionists, who despise anyone who dares to continue rejecting the Darwinian paradigm.
we are an affront to those truthers and participants in the alternative media who have turned towards neo-pagan esotericism and put their hope in modernized populist concepts of Gnosticism. Because the message of the cross stands in opposition to the message of personal enlightenment. And lastly, we are absolutely hated and slated for extermination by the practicing Satanists who control the power centers of this fallen world. Because the return of Jesus is the only thing which truly threatens their dream of recreating their beloved Atlantean civilization. However, the more I see all these factors and factions clamoring for influence in the minds of men and women in these days which we are now living, the more I find myself nonetheless hearing such voices being drowned out by the plain and simple word of God. I read the words of Jesus warning us, his disciples, about the things which must come to pass before his return. The false messiahs, wars between nations, famines, earthquakes, pestilences, fearful events and great signs in the heavens, the persecution such as the world has never before seen, nor will ever see again. And after the Lord describes many of these things being foretold about those perilous last days, he says to us, When you see all these things beginning to take place, stand and look up, because your redemption is drawing near. And so when I think back upon the seemingly insane topic of a flat and close creation, and how it has so irresistibly invaded my heart and mind to where I can now scarcely go outside anymore without my eyes wandering to the lofty heights above in abject wonder. I really don't perceive the possible unveiling, the rediscovery of this original cosmological perspective as being at all accidental or planted by the enemy in the context of the turbulent days that are almost certainly just ahead because it really only falls in line with what we already know we are supposed to do when the days grow dark and even when it feels like perhaps there is no more faith to be found on the earth. And so, my dear brothers, my dear sisters, as we learn the lesson of the fig tree, and as we see the leaves begin to grow, revealing that the summer is almost near, look up. When knowledge increases and men run to and fro, Look up.
when the deceivers come in increasing waves, claiming, I am the Messiah, I am the Maitreya, I am the Christ Consciousness. Do not listen. Do not fall. Look up. When you see nation rising against nation, and hear of wars and rumors of wars, look up. When you see famines and earthquakes in various places, look up. When you see the beginnings of birth pains, look up. When you see the love of most growing cold and many people turning away from the true faith and hating each other, look up. When you begin to see real persecution and you are hunted down and brother turns against brother and children turning in their parents, look up. When they call you mentally unstable, call you insane, or call you a bigot, call you an enemy of the state because you refuse to listen to the false wisdom of this world, look up. When they start coming after you because you will not take the mark, nor worship the image of the beast, look up. When you see standing in the holy place the abomination that causes desolation, run! and look up. When you see people in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea, look up. And when the sun is finally darkened and even the moon does not give its light, and even the heavenly bodies themselves are shaken, Look up.